Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're back at my mom's house. So don't worry, I still have my own home. I'm just here at my mom's house. Uh, no, but I wanted to talk about some of the interesting things going on in travel these days with all the travel chaos that we're still hearing about. Because, you know, when the summer started, we all were kind of, you know, excited to get back. And I could see how people were raring to go. The airports were filling up fast. People were watching our blog. People were in the blog. I mean, people have been reading the blog for a long time. Our blogs were going really big. And the videos were going. And then when the travel chaos really kicked in in July, when the Europeans started to travel as well, and you started hearing all the bad problems with the airports and the luggage and all kinds of stuff, put a little bit of damper on people's travel excitement, I would say. And I think it's important to realize that you can still have a great time traveling. There's just some things you need to think about to kind of deal with some of the travel chaos we have going on these days. And so I want to go through some of those things um, to, excuse me, today to start off with. So if people are watching the replay, you know that you're going to get some of the stuff now. And I'll talk more about uh, I'll talk about it again later after we've been on for a while to talk about some of the things. But there's some things we really need to talk about. But the main things, talk about the travel chaos, can deal with the rest of the summer and probably going into the early fall and how that is probably going to come back at Christmas time for the holidays and then probably next summer as well because it takes a while to get all those people hired and trained and just I just want people to be ready. So we're talking about that. We're going to talk about some good des destinations to go in the fall um, because, you know, fall is coming and now fall travel season. I know it sounds weird to say when tomorrow is August, but I mean, the Christmas stuff has been in the stores since the earlier in this month. So who knows? All right. So we're going to talk about some of that, but all kinds of good stuff out here to talk about. So let, let's go into the travel chaos. So the stuff you're hearing most about is, you know, the delays and cancellations have kind of calmed down a little bit, or at least it's not showing up online as much. What you're seeing more of now is all those lost luggages. Like you heard about, like there's an airport, I think in the Netherlands, where they literally just throwing away uh, suitcases because the suitcases had food in them and they've been there so long they were rotting. So one thing I really want to talk about is if you're going to be traveling, it's going to come to packing. If you can do carrying on only, do carry on only. That means instead of just wearing one T-shirt, you know, wear two or three T-shirts when you're when you, when you're going. I mean, I know it sounds silly, but put it on two or three T-shirts so you have those clothes there instead of having to pack can make a big difference. I know, for example, I'm going to be going to England this early this fall, and I still think there's going to be some issues. I'm not checking bags. I'm going to do carry on, but I take my my you know camera gear as well, and it's like, okay, I'll wear my jeans and socks and two t-shirts and a quarter zip, you know, to go. And then my backpack, I'm just got my backpack, which one whole section is, you know, the, the, the camera gear. And then I'm like, all right. So like five pairs of underwear, a couple t-shirts and, and a pair of thin pants, you know, I'm like, cause I, I got to fit it all in there. Cause I can't take a chance of, of losing some of this stuff. So it is one of those things you got to think about. And, and Ivy, thank you very much for the super chat. It does. Your contribution does make a difference. And I'm going to talk about what I use the contributions you all helped out last time with, because when I was in Pittsburgh filming, uh, Tom Shannon might be on here later. I was with Tom and I was filming in Pittsburgh in the Northeast. You know, that we had the RV video, which I'll talk about a bit. The mic stopped working. Luckily I noticed it and only a couple videos were affected, but I, I was doing the Don'ts of Pittsburgh and I had to redo the, like the last 10 minutes of the video. And I was like, this was an awesome video. And then I was going to check it. And I'm like, there's no sound at the end. Oh no. And then I went through and uh, so your contributions, I have, I ordered a new mic. So we'll have a new mic to see if that will fix it. Otherwise we really need to get that new, uh, we really need to get the new, new camera. Ouch. So Yes, thank you, Ivy. It does your contribution means a lot. Thank you so much. Anyway, let's get back to the uh, the travel chaos stuff. So, really, packing less is going to be a big thing. Um, even if you're, I mean, most people are really trying to think, how can I just do carry on? You really need to kind of consider that. One thing I think is also important if you're just doing carry on, sometimes you have to gate check your luggage. Make sure you're checking your connections. How much connection time do you have? Because, for example, one of the air airports I fly out of, you can you always have to gate check anything bigger than like a backpack or a purse just because they don't have the space. And you may think, oh, I'll be able to get off in time to get out of my bag and run to my next flex. It's a quick connection. Sometimes it takes 30 minutes for those gate check bags to show up. And that could mean the difference between making your flight and not making your flight. So there's a lot of things to kind of consider. Um, I will say though that the luggage issues are mostly not in the U.S. so much. 
it is U.S. carriers but when they're going to Europe and stuff. That's why you've heard the stories of a Delta airline that brought 1,000 bags back to the U.S. because of the lost luggage stuff. But uh, yeah, so of course, remember when you're packing, never put your meds, never put your money, never put electronics or batteries in, in there. Anything that's anything that you don't want to lose, one, don't, don't take it with you unless you have to. I'll be honest with you. That's one thing people don't realize. They think they need to take all their great jewelry and all their favorite stuff. You don't have to. Like, just leave it at home. It's okay if you have a picture without that. Like, I mean, I know I'm, I'm too fat for my wedding ring right now, but <laughs> Jocelyn Sunson will travel. She won't take the wedding ring. She just because why, why make those issues? Okay, so that's something to kind of consider. So that's one thing I think is with your packing going forward, it, it, the carry-on only thing is really going to be important, especially going to Europe. Um, that's why some things you might consider is cutting out connections. I know it usually costs more to get those direct flights, but to minimize the chance of a delay and a misconnection, you have no misconnection if there's no connections. Ah, you know, but but honestly, right now, I'm looking at flights and I'm like, if I can get the direct one and it's 20% more, I'm still going to do the direct one because I can't take a chance of that delay here or cancellation there with all the issues going. Also, there's less chance your bags are going to get lost if you're just going point to point because the more, remember, the more points you go to, the more points where your luggage can get lost. So you gotta you gotta be careful with that, okay? Um, also, with the the delays and with the cancellations, you really need to look at the airlines you're flying with. I mean, and it's not I'm not saying like good airlines, bad airlines. You know, there's all kinds of airlines, but you really look at the they'll, they'll actually track the delays of their airlines and their airplanes and look at the planes you're going on. You can actually go and look up and see how often does this plane delayed how often is this plane canceled and that'll give you an idea like my my sister-in-law was flying up here to visit us and i knew the airline she was on and i'm like yeah we don't have to be there at nine joss like she gets in 905 i'm like yeah don't worry about it like and what do you know phone call from the sister-in-law yeah we've been delayed we're getting at one so you kind of kind of check things out you know so so just be aware of that that's going to help you eliminate some of the headaches that are there but yeah i mean I mean, that, that's one thing is as children go back to school starting, you know, some schools are going back next week. As some people like vacation to schools don't start till September 1st. But once you start getting into September, like the second week of September, you're going to see a big drop off in the, the issues because so many more people aren't going to be traveling with the family. So that's going to help out. So just, just something I think you really should consider. Also, if you're going to be traveling at Christmas time, they're not going to be hiring all those people they, you know, that you like needed during summer. They might not have those by, by Christmas. And holiday season is just as busy as summer season. So be ready for those. So if you're going to be taking gifts during the holidays, don't. Take pictures and show pictures. Like one thing you can do is you take a picture of the gift and you put it in an envelope and you give those as the gift. And then when they get home, then they get the gift. Okay. So there's all kinds of stuff. I actually have a video somewhere on um, like how to get the presents or how to say to get presents to you when you're traveling. Some of those can really help out. Okay. So just some things I want to talk about. Um, also. Um, if you're looking for destinations for the fall, obviously leaf peeping is a big thing. So if you're looking at New England, but don't just think New England is the only place in the U.S. you go and see the leaves change. That's just the most famous one. If you go up to Michigan, you go to Wisconsin, Minnesota, heck, parts of Illinois, there's, you know, Washington. I mean, there's so many different places you can go and really see the leaves change and the beauty of it. But look around and see what's there. Also, as we get into September, you get into shoulder season. So the prices are going to start coming down. So for those of you that were scared off by the really crazy summer you know, airline ticket prices know that relief theoretically is coming up. So I just want to just want to try to talk to somebody, get, get some of these things over. OK, now let's see. <laughs> hey, Carmen, good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Betty, good to see you, too. Yes. So someone was asked about the ETIS M4 Steam. So, yes, E-T-I-A-S is the equivalent. It's not a visa. They'll tell you a thousand times it's not a visa. Uh, basically, what you have to do is you give, when, for those of you who don't know, when Europeans come to the U.S., they have what's called the ESTA program, which they have to, like, give their passport information, where they're going to go, and, you know, their basic info, right? So you have that, you pay a fee, and then it's valid for a number of years. So this E-T-I-A-S, this is the when you ever hear people say, oh, Americans are going to have to get visas to go to Europe, this is for going to Schengen countries, and, and that's a certain certain number of European countries have it. 
Um, and what you'll do, it's very simple. You have to do it, but you have to do it within se before 72 hours of departure because it can take up to 72 hours to get the get the okay, okay? And what you do is you give them your name, passport number, when does it expire, when does it, I think it's when was it issued, who issued it by, basically all the stuff on your passport page, okay? Um, plus uh, maybe a little, a couple more questions about yourself. And then you also have to put in the first country you're going to travel to. Now, the thing is, is when you apply for this, it's good for three years or the end of your passport, if your passport's less than that three years. Because once your passport's done, you get a new passport, you're going to have to get a new ETIS, not visa, but permission or whatever they want to call it, okay? But it's very similar. There's a number of websites you can do it on. There's an official website. There's other private websites that help. But honestly, it takes like five minutes, maybe 15 minutes to do it. Five to 15 minutes, you're out, done out of the way and, and you're good. Um Honestly, I think it's something that airlines could probably do once you buy that ticket. You know, they're like, oh, do you have this? And, you know, give the number for it. Uh, one thing they do say is you want to make sure you, because uh, it'll come as an email. You just get an email with a PDF. Okay. And, and you know, I mean, how many of you remember where your emails are from three years ago, right? So maybe star that one um, because you might not get asked for it. You might get asked for it. We don't know yet because it doesn't go into effect until May of next year. I will say this. Um, it's been pushed back so many times. Like this summer, I filmed one that was talked about. It was going to come out January 1st. And now it's like literally I filmed it. And two days later, they announced it's going to go out in May. So I had to make a little adjustment to that. But there will be a video out for that later because I don't want people to freak out because it's still that far off um, for you to do it. Um, and when, when it's time for me to do it, I will, I'll, do, I'll make a video showing me do it so you can see how easy or how difficult it could be. But at least you have a step-by-step -step process. Um, so, so there is that, but this is something I think it's going to be like seven euros. I mean, it's, it's next to nothing. It's just another level of bureaucracy for us all to go through, but don't let it scare you off from traveling. Okay. And if you do get denied, they do have an appeals process uh, because, you know, it's all pretty much an automated kind of thing. And so the appeals actually goes to a real person. So it takes a little more time. So you can do that. That's what they say. Make sure you do it at least 72 hours before, because it can take up to 72 hours to get your results. Okay. So something to kind of think about so i just want to kind of put that out there to talk about that so that was a question i saw people had so thank you m4 steam for putting that out there <laughs> yes always a little little pricey in jackson hole that's true so um oops sorry my, my stuff keeps jumping around here so ivy delver any apps you recommend to help when traveling the european union so there's not one specific app, okay? One thing I will say is whatever country you're going to go to, get their, like, train app. If you're going to be taking the trains, if you're doing the buses, the bus apps, because those things are a lot easier because then you can just buy your tickets online and just show them the QR code, and you're good to go. We did that for um, Train Italia and Deutsche Bahn. Made life so much easier. Like, that's going to be a really good one. Because um, the thing is, when you're going to Europe, I mean, you're not usually staying at a Hilton, so you don't need the Hilton app. Um, one thing is uh, maps.me, so you can download maps of places that will work offline, so you don't have to use your data, or if you're in some place, like, you know, if you're in Slovenia in the mountains, you're not going to have a lot of good signal. So you can zoom in and see where things are, and also you can pin different places you want to go, so you can kind of, like, map out your journey for that day. Uh, and that's one, sometimes when I get bored, I just start searching for things to see in different cities, so that would be, like, a good maps app. Oh, also, if you get a good translation in the maps, Google Translate's fine. Uh, there's other ones you can get that work fine. Like literally, you can just like put your camera up, like you have your camera, and then you like do, and then it shows it in the other language, like translated, but in the same text, which is kind of cool. So, so there's that. Let's see. Uh, Shamik, I actually have a video that talks about a Central Europe itinerary. Uh, if you just look up Central Europe Walters World, it'll pop up on there. Let's see. Yeah, City Mapper is another good one. So Xavier or Javier, um, is Ecuador still safe? I asked because of the recent riots. Here's the thing is when you have high levels of inflation and supply chain issues, you do have more unrest. And this isn't just in Ecuador and Sri Lanka. You are seeing this in lots of places around the world. That is one thing you need to consider when you're looking to go places. But I will say is a lot of times the riots aren't focused on travelers. They're focused on government things. So that would be one thing I would look out for. <laughs> Carolita, hi from Peru. I'm glad that your kids loved Inca Cola. Oh, they did. And I'll tell you, 
Carlita, so whenever we go to a, a Peruvian restaurant, which are actually getting more popular in the U.S. because Peruvian food, hey, y'all, if you get a chance to go eat Peruvian food, go eat Peruvian food. So good. So many good ones in Miami, too. But uh, whenever we go, my son is like, yeah, 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 Inca Cola, please. And when they go, oh, we don't have Inca Cola. I mean, you could literally see his heart break as he's sitting there, like how depressed he gets if they don't have Inca Cola because he loves it. He loves it. Oh, nice. Let's see. Paul, thanks, buddy. I appreciate your contribution, your super chat. That's really nice. Um, for those who know, that the contribution last time that bought the new mic for my camera because the old one, I think it was the old one that was messed up, why the, the sound stopped working. So that's coming. It should be waiting for me when I get home tomorrow. So uh, we'll have a new mic up. So thank you for that, Paul, because I know you helped that last time and that helped get us a new one. So thank you. But Paul's going leaving Friday for a film festival in Lucarno, Switzerland. Awesome. And then the Liechtenstein for the National Day Festival. Hope the heat wave breaks. Yeah, I will say when you're up in Liechtenstein, it, it'll be a little cooler. But don't forget, like, where I mean, I know I'm bald, so it's one of those things. So I need to wear a hat all the time. But bring a hat or something because you you get like burned because you're like in the mountains and stuff. Um, do you have a heads up for that? I don't know if you're taking the bus in for stuff, but I was there uh, for Christmas. Uh, how many years ago? That was a few. It was it was a few pounds ago and a few gray hairs ago. Um, but we had a nice time there. They, they, they're, they're festivals that do a good job because the, the looking giant people are really proud of their, their area. So you have a good time, my friend. So cool. Have fun. Awesome. Ah, my thing just jumped all over me. Jumped all over the place. Let's see. Anthony, thank you very much for the super chat, my friends. I know we're just talking about apps. Have you used Trainline for trains in Europe? Also, I've had a good experience with Viator. Any thoughts on them? So train line is fine. There's 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 actually quite a few train apps, but I always look at it this way. When you're looking at a third party app like a Viator, like an Expedia, like hotels.com or bookings.com, any of those things, but you have to realize if anything goes wrong, you have you don't go through Deutsche Bahn, you don't go through Train Italia, you don't go through Hilton, you don't go through Delta, you have to go through Viator to figure things out. Yeah, you gotta go through Expedia to figure things out. So what I recommend, if you like find the train, the times on train line, I would then go to, if it's in Italy, go to trainitalia.com and buy your ticket there. Or if you're going to be in Finland, go to vr.fi and find it and buy the ticket directly because then it's a lot easier if there's issues, especially if there's a delay and you have to get switched to a different train. Um, because sometimes I don't know, that only counts for this train. But if you have the local thing, like, oh, this works for technically any train that goes between Padova and and Venice, so I, we know you were on the other one, but it's okay. That's one thing to think about. Also, when you're looking at things like Viator, um, which we, we've worked with them before, we've used them before, but they'll take probably, I don't know, it's 20% or 30% of whatever you pay from the guide. So if you can find that guide online on their own site, they'll get, like, you'll pay, you pay the same price. It's just more of the money goes to the actual guide. Um, that's one thing I've worked with a number of guides, uh, the last couple of years to really try to promote the book direct. The problem is, is with search and optimization with kind of things like Viator, they are Airbnb experiences. They have such good SEO that it's hard to break through. So see if you can find them and, and book direct for those tours. Um, another thing I think is important, and this is one thing I've been told specifically by tour guides is that places like Viator, not just Viator, but other, other, you know, book a guide or buy or get local guides or whatever. Um, sometimes they'll sell a tour that's not on sale. Like I have a friend of mine, he doesn't give tours on Thursdays because that's his real day job. And he, they sold Thursday tours and he's like, I'm at work. And so what does he get? He gets a one-star review on via tour, via tour, you know, knocks him down a peg on the search stuff for things. He's like, you sold a tour a day that I don't do. And I told you we can't do that. These are things, and maybe it was a technical issue, but I've heard that from more than one one guide. So something to kind of think about when you're looking at these three third party acts or third party apps, Anthony. So I hope that helps. But like things like train line, they're great for getting train times. So I mean, I'm not not saying anything bad. Oh yes, please, Jada. Thank you very much. If you could hit the like button, I'd be very, very helpful. I would greatly appreciate it. Oh, I do have another thing. If you look on the, I guess we on this side. 
If you look at the pinned comment at the top, that's a link to our RV resort video. Uh, we work with Sun Outdoors for this video, and they're giving away a $200 gift card to a lucky person that types, lets us know where they would like to go on an RV trip in the U.S. or Canada. And then they'll, they'll, they'll pick a winner out and give them $200 of credit to uh, to spend on a RV resort. So if you want to check it out, go ahead and go over. You just got to use the hashtag MySunnierSide. So, uh, so, yeah, so there's that. Let's see. Michael asked, my Mark, hello. Have you ever cruised? I have. I'm going to cruise in October. I don't know what to expect. Well, here's the thing. It depends what cruise you're going on because it's a very different. Like Rhine River cruises aren't really happening so much right now because the Rhine is so low. So that would be one thing. But you can do like there's coastal cruises. Like I did a coastal cruise of Croatia and we kind of stayed along the coast doing things. And those are a little bit bigger. Like if you look at the size wise, you usually have like riverboat cruises coastal cruises and then there's like you know the big med cruises or the caribbean cruise lines those big ones that they're on there and one thing i always tell people is like remember the more people more problems uh so you got to be careful what you want to do um it's really important when it comes to cruises is to actually make sure you do the research on that cruise line because different cruise lines really tailor different people like some people say this cruise line is for people 80 and older this cruise line is for families this cruise line is for people that want to party i mean there's there's all kinds of different stuff out there so that would be one thing I think might be important to kind of think about. So what type of work did your dad used to do in Mexico? My dad sold cow and pig feed to farmers all over Mexico. So he did that for, I don't know, 15 years or so. Because then, yeah, he was there and he was also working in South Korea. So, Yeah, I saw some Ryan cruises going two weeks ago when I was in Cologne. Yeah, there, there's still some, but there's some spots where it's getting so low that it's an issue. And they're saying that it's not going to have a lot of rain for the next month or so. So be careful. You might have some adjustments on it. They'll still get you there. Don't worry. Don't worry. They're not going to let the cruise not happen. But it's just one of those things that you might notice. Like, huh, the co the boat is kind of farther away from the, the side of the river than it usually is. Yeah, it is true. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, sorry. It's, it's I, I'm trying to slow this thing the the thing down so I can reply to some people. So let's see. Yeah, Carmen makes a good point. They book tours direct is great, but those aggregators they do make it a lot easier. Like I understand why people. Would, I can't. I can't. I can't fault a consumer for using something that makes their life easier. Yeah, I'm just I'm just letting you know from the uh, from the tour guide side of things. Oh, this is a good one. So Global Nico, uh, Nick's a good dude. Uh, you can check out his stuff for places actually all over Europe now. I think he's going to be in Ireland for a while, but he's from all over Greece. Anyone traveling to Greece, a useful app in cities is beat for taxis because there's some places you don't have Uber. Like if you're going to Italy, there's only Uber in I think Milan and Rome. So. You have to get the taxis app to do that or Malta, you know, those things. So something to think about. Dylan Duran, Duran, yes, got back from Egypt in June. Very awesome. No problem except an hour delay at Heathrow. Eh, normal. I hope you go to Egypt. I'd love to hear your tips for the country. Yes, so Egypt is one of our destinations for 2023. So we should be there actually about the time you were there, but next year. So you have to share me some share, share me some tips. Share with me some tips, Dylan. Let's see. Hey, mom. There's my mom on there. Hello, hello. Ah, Sean or Cian. I don't know. I never know which way to go. Tips for first solo travel tip. Know that you can do it, and you'll make friends along the way. And don't let people scare you out of traveling solo. I traveled solo by myself for years. Um, like I went all over South America multiple times, like six months once and two months another time. No, six months and three months. It was a lot. Uh, multiple times in Europe. I mean, you can do it. Um, one thing I would say is trust your gut. If you're like, this doesn't seem right, or I don't know if I, if you think, I don't know if I should be there, you shouldn't be there. So that, that would be one thing I would probably tell you. Ellen, welcome to the team. Glad to have you. Uh, tips for Madrid. We do have a few Madrid videos that are out there. Uh, one thing I say, you got the three big museums, the the, the Reina Sofia, where you have Guernica from, from uh, Picasso. You got, um, oh, my brain just, the Prado, uh, which is fantastic for more of the, the, the masters you know about. Uh, Rubens is there. They get some great Rubens that are there. You have that. Uh, then there's the, it's not Tyson Krupp, what's it called? Oh, 
It's right across the way. I'm, I'm brain farting right now. I'm actually looking at going back to Madrid for teaching a class next summer. So there's three main museums in Madrid you can go to. Uh, they're all worth going to, but I would say the Reina Sofia and the Prada are the most important ones just because the collections they do have. Um, in Madrid, lot, there's a lot of nightlife. Don't feel bad if you can't keep up because the Spaniards do go out a lot later. They eat a lot later. So if you are kind of a person who likes to eat like a five or six or seven o'clock dinner, you're going to have to go to a tourist restaurant for that and don't go to the tourist restaurants. If they have a big wall that has all these different paellas on it, don't go there because that's a tourist place. Yes, Japanese rail. The trains in Japan are fantastic. You will, if they're open up for you, you should go. I mean, Japan, we had a wonderful time in Japan. It was an incredible experience. Excuse me. Mike, so while traveling, have you ever gotten stuck because of Uber transportation fields? Yes, a number of times we've been stuck. So I remember one time I was in Brazil and I was like on a 14 hour bus ride and there was a chemical spill on this bridge. The problem was is then the bridge was shut down on both sides and we were so like kind of like on the lead up to it. So it was all these high walls. And so we got stuck there like 10 hours, like basically on the highway. And this bulldozer came from the other end to bust the, uh, bust the, the wall down so people could get their cars out. And they're like trying to do it behind our bus and our bus driver's like, no, do it here so we can get out. So we, instead of, you know, a 14 hour bus ride, it took us like 26 hours to get to, what was it, Maceo, I think I was going to. Yeah, so that, that was one. Um, there's been a few. Was, there's no one I was thinking of. Um, uh, tra oh, we were in Portugal, and our train broke down. And this train track only had one other train. The train comes every two hours. So the train broke down. And what they did is they got the other train to get up next to us. And literally, I mean, it, it, we both stopped, okay? But we literally had to, like, go and then jump from one to the other because it was too far down to, to get down because, you know, those trains are really high. So we like kind of like walked down the step and then jumped over the other side. And then when we got on the other train, it was obviously so full that we were sitting on the floor and uh, Caleb was like three at the time. So we were like pretending to make a campfire in the middle of the thing. And, and we had like, there was no room. So we ended up like putting Caleb up above in the, uh, like the overhead compartment to put the luggage. So we put him up there. So we, had a, it, we made the best experience for it, but it took a few extra hours to get back to Lisbon there. But yeah, there's been a, there's been a few of those. There's been a few of those over the years. Let's see. Okay, so Anthony has a good one. So thank you for being a member, by the way, Anthony. That's very nice of you. Uh, hey, Mark, I'm waiting to see my use my United points to get a flight to Ireland in September. Do you think I should keep waiting? until it goes down or just bite the bullet and spend a whole bunch of points. Here's the thing. I think one of the mistakes a lot of people make is we save our points for too long. Um, and we're thinking, I'm going to use it for this vacation. I'm going to use it for this trip. Honestly, some of the best bets you're going to have is if you just upgrade your tickets, like get an economy and upgrade yourself to a Comfort Plus or, or a first-class ticket or something like that, at least for part of the legs, like the long part. Uh, to help you out like i i would always recommend if you if you can if you have the miles use the miles you're going to europe for that flight whether you're going to atlanta to paris or or seattle to frankfurt or whatever use it for that leg going over because you want to be rested and as rested as you can be when you get there so you don't have the jet lag you don't feel so horrible you know and so you can hit the ground running so that's a better time to use it um because if you don't feel that you're getting a good deal you might just look at buying a normal ticket and then, like i said use that to upgrade um, but don't don't waste your because I remember back in the day, fifty thousand miles got you a free trip to Europe, twenty five thousand miles free domestic flight. Now fifty thousand miles might get you a domestic flight. I'm like, oh, why didn't I use those back then? So that's something to kind of think about. Okay, so I would I would look at using those sooner rather than later. Okay, um, let's see. So many questions. I'm sorry. Annette, Mark, for COVID tests to get into France, do you get tested in Italy or when we land in France? So if they, I don't know if France was testing again. Uh, if you're testing to get into a country, you have to test before you go. So if you're flying in from whatever country you're going from, originally you got to test then. Um, but I don't know, is France still testing? It's France. Let's see. 
Oh, if you're unvaccinated, you still have to get the test. So you got to do the test before you go. You you don't get it when you're there because otherwise you just have to go to, um, you have to go in uh, quarantine or whatever. So, so yeah, let me look into her. This is a good care, good question. Thank you very much for the super chat, Vampira Mayhem. How to be in the moment more when traveling solo? You see this? This thing is the devil. Because what you do is you start taking pictures and videos. Like I do this because I'm always doing the videos for the B-roll. And you end up, instead of seeing it like this, you don't see the country like this. You see the country like this. And therefore, you miss out something. So sometimes you don't get the picture. Sometimes you don't get the video. Because let's be honest, how many of you go back and look at your pictures a lot of times? Do you look at all 500 of them or do you look at five of them? That's one thing I think is kind of important because... I know for me, when I when I go through this, I mean, I have a 500 gigabyte phone and it's full every time I come back from a trip because I get all the B-roll, all this stuff. And and I'll be honest, if I wasn't making the videos, I don't know how many I go back and look at. So take the time to really focus on the moment and not focus on the phone. Uh, that's one thing. Also, when you're taking the train, this is one thing. I, I make this mistake now a lot because when I'm traveling between cities, especially when I'm in Europe on the train, I, you know, like, so this is one... You'll see me with one of these books all the time. This is my script book. So like I'll be in there like writing down, here's some of the shorts we made for Shorts of Italy. And then here's my Don'ts of Milan notes that I'm going to use as my script. And I'm always working on this. And sometimes I forget to stop, look out the window, or stop and talk to people that I'm sitting with. And I've always seen the coolest people just talking like at a hostel or at a hotel or at a restaurant. So that's one of those things. Just try to be more in the moment so you have that. Celine. I'm not answering that. So, yeah, walking tours are good for solo travels because a lot of times you're doing a walking tour, you got other travelers that are there. Some not solo travelers, well, and sometimes you meet a, a couple or uh, some friends and you're going around and you're kind of like their add on buddy for a little bit. So, that's kind of nice. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, the Shutterfly books, that's actually a good one. Like, if you are really in the moment, like when you're coming back home or when you first get back home, you remember all the best things, making a Shutterfly book or one of those or a Visa print book where it kind of makes the book for you is really great because it just drag drop your stuff in there. That can be a nice way because then it's really set up for you to enjoy looking at versus, you know, when you scroll your phone, you're trying to find something for your friend and they like hit the wrong button. You're like, did you delete my favorite photo? Sometimes it gets a bit much. So it's something to think about, but yeah, that's a really good one, Carmen. Steven Rapp. Hello. Hello, my friend. Thank you very much for the super chat. Off to London and Germany soon. Germany first. We are taking Eurostar to London, getting on in Brussels. With a 20-minute change to Eurostar, is that going to be an issue? So are you taking the train from Germany to get in and then you've got to switch? That could be an issue because you usually have to do a little security before you go on the Eurostar. Um, and if there's any delays, which in Germany now with their nine Euro tickets, there's been some delays. Um, thank you, my friend. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're coming in from Germany, I guarantee there's an earlier train coming in. That's going to be coming in. Uh, that would be something I would look into, uh, just because the, if you were like in Germany with the connection, I'd probably be okay with that. But since you're going to be coming into Brussels, and when you're going to get off the train, and then you got to go to the Eurostar one, and a lot of times they'll have like, like I said, the extra little things. It'd be it'd be a little tight, like because think about it, ten minute delay, which isn't uncommon. Um, I can't remember when you're going. I know you're going soon. And it's August. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas Rise, Stephen, 20 was too tight for Germany to UK as you go to the British Border Control. Yeah, so something to think about. Marguerite, when am I making Mexico videos again? If it was up to Liam, we would be going tomorrow. Um, I'm actually looking to go to Mexico City. What is that? I think in February? Like just for a, a guy's weekend then. Uh, Monterey is a cool city. Um, my dad actually worked there a lot when he was working in Mexico. I actually went there. Uh, when he was working, he took me down there a couple times. So I did have a fun time when I was there. Harry, hey, Walter's World, I was wondering how to avoid scams in Thailand. Honestly, we have tons of videos on, on travel scams. Once you, once you realize, one, any offer is any offer that sounds too good is too good. That's one thing. And two, don't believe the over helpful, friendly person whether it is with the mustard or the, the the soup stuck on you or the bird poop on you or the this is a bar you really should go to. Always have those with a little, take those with a little grain of salt. So something I want to let you know. 
Uh, Aviation Matthew, good to see you again, my friend. Hey, Mark, I really appreciate the study abroad advice from your last life. I'm glad I could help out. I was wondering if you have any tips on how to meet locals while living abroad. I'll be studying in Central England. Okay, so this is a question that I think is really important. And this isn't just for study abroad people. This is for a lot of people. One thing is whenever you go to move abroad, live abroad, study abroad, or travel abroad, if anyone, I, I know I just said, be careful for the overly friendly person, but if you're studying abroad, it's a little bit different situation. If people ask, oh, you're new here. You want, you want to grab a drink? You want to go to dinner? You want to, you want to do something sometime? Don't say no. Because what happens is if you say no once, they might not ever ask you again. And then they'll tell their friends, oh, I asked them. They didn't want to come do anything. And then people just go the easy way out to say, oh, Matt doesn't ever do anything. So never mind. So especially when you first get in, it's really important. No matter how bad that jet lag is when you get there, if they're like, hey, we're going out for some pints. You want to? Sure. Hey, we're going to go play some you know, some football. You're like, well, yeah, I suck at football. It doesn't matter. Just go. They'll make fun of you. But that's good because they'll make fun of you like a friend. So that's one thing. Another thing you could do is find things that you like to do at home and go do that there. You like comic books, go find a comic book shop. You know, you like playing, you know, snooker, go find a billiards hall. Like, it's amazing. You'll find people that have the same hobbies you do all over the world. Like when I, when I went, you know, when I was in Finland, I, I like to go to the gym. I made a bunch of friends at the gym. When I was in Portugal, yeah, Portugal was a gym one as well, but also the swimming pool. I like to swim, so I met people there. I love to go dancing, so I go to the clubs. I met people at the clubs from dancing. I see them a lot of times. We became friends. So there's a lot of things you can do, but a lot of it just goes back to you know, being open to say yes, especially the beginning, because honestly, people will give you that. One, it sounds silly, but that one chance to make a first impression is very, very true. So there's that. Oh, the Quebecois. So my parents are going to be going to Quebec City. Uh, here in a few months. So if you see him up there, say hi. But yes, Quebecois is slightly different than French French. Just, it's not as different as Swiss German is to Hochdeutsch, High German. But uh, yeah, there, there is a difference. There, there is a difference. I, I can tell you that much. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the distraction. Thanks, Nora. Yeah. Watch for distractions. A lot of times someone's working the crowd around whatever is going on and pickpocketing. Yeah. And that's why there's a noise over there. You ever see the movies? They throw the coins over there. So people look over there while they're doing something bad over here. It works the same way. Also, you will never win three card Monty, whether it's with cups, whether it's with cards, you will not win. You will not win. I have a whole video of a guy just taking people's money in Paris. I got to put that out because that one was just like perfect. Yes, tomorrow. Very good. Tomorrow makes a good point. Take the first flight out in the morning, direct flights only. Just because there are delays or anything happens, you, you've already started going, so you have a better chance to get that destination than other places. And, and Chris makes the thing, it's easier for younger people to make new friends. Yeah, because people are not as set in their ways. And so they're like, ah, I, I'm looking for new friends. That's one thing is like, if you ever talk to parents, they'll say, you know, we used to make a lot of friends when the kids were little because the kids are making friends and therefore they make friends with the parents, right? And so that's why it is tougher. Like even my parents travel abroad. They, they tend to make some friends when they travel. My mom's made a number of friends over the years, but that's when she's been like by herself, not with my dad. So people talk to her and she meets, she met a lot of nice like shop attendants and stuff that are like, that are, you know, more mature. And then we've gone out to dinner with them, partied with them, all kinds of stuff. Um, but it is tougher as you get older. That's why it really is like, what do you like to do and find something like that or something close enough related to it that you can, uh, have some to talk about. And actually, that is one thing with the pandemic is now everyone has everyone has a story. What did you do during the pandemic? What did you watch? Was it Tiger King? Was it Stranger Things? What was it? Like you at least have some common point because that's what you need. Just that one common point that we can talk about and we can grow our friendship from, and that can make a big difference. Let's see, Stuart Ross, my bunny. Thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. 2023 is taking shape, but still fluid apart from a trip to Southern France to watch rugby. Hamburger, Cologne for a three to four day trip. Ooh. Those are both cool cities. Ah. Ooh. I would probably do Hamburg with a day trip either to Lubeck or Lüneburg. And I've got videos in all three of those places Hamburg, Lüneburg, and Lubeck. That would be the one I go for, Stuart, because I know you and I know what you like. I think you'd like that better than the Cologne one because Cologne got totally wiped out during the war aside from the cathedral and Bonn, which is right next to it, has really great museums, but 
I think you'd like the the Hamburg and then the day tribute to Lubeck or Lunenburg. So, so there is that. Steven Rep, thank you, my friend. Again, dude, here's a double for hefty drinks. I will lose cost of DB ticket if canceled. Getting in Brussels, Eurostar. Please help Q City friend what to do. Okay, so can you switch the ticket? Because you can ask the DB people if you can switch. They might be able to do that or the Eurostar ones. Probably Eurostar ones will probably be friendlier about switching the ticket um, than the, the German ones. That's the thing is, did you buy it through a third party? Buying direct, it's going to be easy to switch stuff. Um, but you can always, if there's a call number or something, they might be able to help. But I, I would ask the Eurostar first, so they can get you a later one. Um, just because it, it theoretically, in a perfect world, it could work. But yeah, I worry, my friend. I worry. Bonjour, bonsoir. Let's see. Experiences with Ryanair and EasyJet. I love EasyJet. I fly them all the time. I like them. Ryanair, I've had a lot more issues with. And that is what I'm going to say. But you can't beat their prices. I mean, you really cannot beat their prices. They are they are very, very nice. Hold on. Steven was writing. So I see a no. I see a direct. I'm trying to find your other thing here. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't gone with Viking for so many years. I, I don't think it would be fair for me to give a – pros or cons on it because it's been too long my parents have actually done them more often uh so that would be that would be a better one to ask but i don't know it's been it's it's been so long and so many things have changed in, in cruising lately that i would be worried that i would not have the most up-to-date stuff but if you go to um living la Lido loco uh they're really good um fun they review a lot of cruise ships also tips for travelers gary bembridge He's really good on – he's probably the, the best for reviews on uh, cruise ships or anybody that wants to go. He does a really good job. Let's see. Gregory Smith. Hey, Mark, any do's and don'ts for a Beatles fan going to Liverpool for the first time? Um, okay. I'll, I'll just get one of the tours. Actually, if you're a big fan, what I would do, I wouldn't do a group tour. I would get a private guide to take you around because then you can ask your questions versus like the four, the like three people that ask all the questions on the group tours. Cause that's one thing. If you're ever going to go to a place that you really love, get a guy cause it'll bring out even more because you might not know, like, you know, a lot of the stories, but those guys, especially the private ones, they go the extra like dive to find more information out. And I think that could be something that'd be really good for you. Right. Like that would be, I, I, that's, that's one thing. If you're going to do it, Get a private guy to take you on those things and just have them drive you around, help you enjoy, and have a good time. Do I ever delete comments on here? Um, if they're bad comments, we have um, moderators that, that knock them off. Um, on our normal videos, I I don't see all of them. Like YouTube, if, it, if it's any video, if there's any word that YouTube doesn't like, you, your video, your thing might not show up. It might just get banned right away. So, yeah. Scorpio Sue, oh, rolling sevens, lucky, lucky lady. Chicago to Rome, layovers, minimum time, cities to avoid, Italy, best cities of Roman history. Um, best cities of Roman, obviously Rome. Um, you could actually, some of the places, like if you're in Croatia, there's some good places like Ravine um, has a really great thing. And Pula has a really good Colosseum. El Gem in, in uh, Tunisia has got some good Roman stuff. Um, obviously Pompeii and Herculaneum, obviously, I mean, the Malfi coast has got so many tours. It's insane, but you can't be Pompeii and Herculaneum to see like the real stuff, like the real, like they got covered by lava. So in ash, so it's still all there. That would be one thing I'd say cities to avoid in Italy. Um, don't go to Pisa. It's not worth your time. All you're going to do is this next to the thing, go someplace else, go to Luca, go, just spend your time in Florence or something, go to Siena. Or actually, go down to Puglia. Go to the go to the heel of the boot. Puglia is great. Bari, Albero Bello, which isn't in Puglia. It's the next day over. It's right there. Uh, no, Albero Bello is in Puglia, but uh, Matara is, isn't. So there's a lot of great things there. So hope that helps, Sue. Thank you. Yeah, Thomas says Eurostar records at least five to five minutes. Thanks, Thomas. And Thomas, you were just on that, weren't you? Like, like a couple of months ago. So. 
My top four cities in Spain. Excuse me. Granada, Cordoba, Ronda, Madrid. So I said what I said. Barcelona is cool, but I said what I said. They would be five. Um, let's see. Kevin, cool. Glad you got a good trip. That sounds like an awesome trip, man. Yeah. See, Puglia, awesome. Oh, hey, in Indonesia, good to see you. Okay, Sven, hi, Mark. I've never been to Europe. Which you to go? Should I go in the winter or wait for spring? If you can go, if you're going to go, it depends where you're going to go. If you're going to go like Central Europe, like the Germany's, Austria's, Czech Republics, I might go before Christmas to get the Christmas markets if they have them this year. Um, otherwise, I'd probably wait till the spring. I mean, you can go in the winter. It'll be a lot cheaper, especially if you go after January January 15th. Prices are so much lower, but so a lot of stuff gets closed. So, Marco asks, hey, having gone to both Argentina and Uruguay, did you drink matzo? Yes, I did. The first time I did, I did not realize how much caffeine it had. And I had like, you know, seven or eight cups. I'm like, this stuff is great. And then my heart's like, da -da 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 -da. I'm like, what the hell is going on? My friend's like, yeah, it's got a lot of caffeine. I'm like, oh, I don't drink caffeine. So that was kind of a surprise. Yes, Mike, you need to get on that with no airline or hotel reservations. That's right. We got to get all kinds of stuff. Let's see. Man, there's like 500 comments I missed. Sorry, it's jumping on. Hey, Terry Finley. Hey, Mark. Wow, it's like, I don't know where everything went. So I'm using StreamYard, and their setup is very different than what, what you all see. So I apologize if you you can always send you can always send your questions again. Let's just put it that way. So if I miss them, just send them again. Yeah, so now I'm seeing the Viking line one again. So maybe it's popping up again. Ooh, Heidi makes a good point. It's easier, easy to make friends when you're traveling by bike. We mostly do biking tours because it gets us away from the tour. Some people are curious about our journey. Yeah. And bikers like to talk to other bikers. That's what's really nice. That's why, like the Camino de Santiago, when people do the hike, like they make they make a lot of friends just because there's so many people doing it. That like we're doing it, we're doing it together. It gives you that common point of reference. So, Nora, Christmas markets or sites in England. Want to see window decor, but what else? You can do the sites in England, and you'll still see all the Christmas stuff. So don't even worry about that. Like you'll get them both. Okay. Um, we were there in. November and there was stuff was already up. the windows were already going. It was late November, but the windows were already going. Yeah. See now I'm seeing the, the Spain one. I just answered. I've seen that one pop up. Okay, Joker Bro. Any advice on traveling to Cusco, Peru going last two weeks of August? The first day, don't do anything. The altitude will mess you up. So drink the coca tea. And if you have a hard time breathing, don't be afraid to ask your hotel for their oxygen. The oxygen will only help you like the first 24 hours to get some oxygen just to help with a headache. Drink lots of water, not tap water. Drink bottled water, lots of it. Get a lot of Gatorade, lots of fluids in you. It's going to help you because the altitude sickness can be really, really bad. So just have a heads up. And when you go to uh, Machu Picchu, that's actually lower, so you don't really have the altitude problem. But in Cusco, you do. Let's see. Uh, CC, there are buses that go to a CC. You can do a tour from there or there's trains that will get you there. Um, let's see. Mr. Armando. Hi, Mark, my wife, and I love your channel. She says I'm the Mexican version of you. Oh, so you're sexy. Nice. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Tell you your wife has fantastic taste. So of course, she knows that. She married you, so. Ah, it keeps jumping around. I'm trying to find the new comments. It keeps jumping everywhere. I apologize, people. Ah, Valencia, Spain. Here's a place that like, people go to kind of in the summer. Valencia is one of the coolest cities because you have this Art Deco architecture in the like business part, right? And there's like the market that's there. It's great. There's the beach, the university is there. I mean, it's Valencia is one of those places I think people really miss out on because it's not the easiest to get. Oh, you can fly into it, yeah. But if you're already in Spain, sometimes it's kind of... Uh, little out of the way so that can be troublesome oh thank Jim and Harriet I appreciate the super chat that's very nice of you your hair still looks good just the one hair just the one hair There's not much less but I appreciate it thank you 
Uh, Ozzy Vlogger, I haven't seen you for a long time. I hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you so much. Wishing you and the family all the best to start a new school yet. Yes, we is starting up. Liam's doing a camp this week. And then he's got like a week till school starts and Caleb's right there too. So it's been, it's been a crazy summer. Like it was great to be traveling again. Like we got to, so since I got out of teach since my, cause I, for those who know I'm a professor. So when my semester ended, so I've got, we've, I've filmed in France, Switzerland, Germany, Denmark, the Netherlands, Finland, Lithuania, Italy, and then around the U.S. too. So I, it's like we can really go around now. So I've been really trying to get a lot. So you'll see a lot of eclectic mixes of videos coming up. Um, that's why, like, you had the RV resort video that came out yesterday. We filmed the main, like, last week. And then we have, like, basic finishes on Wednesday. So there's stuff coming. Hold on. My, my battery is getting low here. Let's see if I can get this. Set up. Apologies that you have to see my belly. But maybe it will inspire some of you to go out and go for that evening walk. <laughs> so, yes, this is this is the best I can do. Oh, so these paintings behind me, these are actually painted by my like great, 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 great uncle. Uh, he was in the British Army and he would paint these got like if you go to the National Gallery, they have his paintings from some of the battlefields, but there's different places from all over the world. It's kind of cool. So as Giada says, it only takes a second to hit that like button. Thank you. Ah, man, this is this thing is jumping all over the place. We called both DB and Eurostar and said plenty of time, et cetera, and don't want to miss my wife's 56th birthday on our 28th anniversary that night. Wow, they both said you had plenty of time? Okay. Well, fingers crossed. But hey, Stephen. What I would do is look and see when the next Eurostar is to London, or if there's any, if there's not anything else, see if there's like a hotel nearby where in Brussels where you could, you know, a backup plan. You know, just a backup plan. Always good backup plans. They're 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 important. They're important. Thank you very much for the super chat, my buddy. Let's see. Easy way to get to Valencia is by yeah, you can get by train, but it's kind of out of the way. I don't know. It's not as it's not as easy as I think it should be in comparison uh, for getting there. So, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Forget. If you've got – just start the questions again because I'm, 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 it's jumped to the bottom here and I'm, like, going crazy with this thing. Ah, Moika. George. Mita Kulu. Hi, Mo Hi, Walter. How are you? I'm good. Hope everything's going well. Greetings from oh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Quitos, obrigado. George, good to hear you. Oh, Vampire is coming to Rome. Nice. Ah, see, I'm trying to click on the like, not just, ah, like I'm trying to click on Giada's thumb, give the thumbs up, but I keep hitting other people's thing. Ooh, here's one. Friend, which airport do you think is the worst? JFK, Amsterdam, or Rome? Uh, JFK is the worst of all those. Amsterdam actually works great, except for lately because the the security lines getting in. Rome isn't bad. It's just that they have a very small security check if you're going international, which is annoying. Uh, so that that was the only thing there. I, I like the Rome airport. I love the Amsterdam airport. JFK, I always have issues. Not issues. It's just like I'm like, why am I walking outside in the rain? I don't understand this. So that's my thing. Geek Sky trip in 49 days. Nice. Flying back from Sheeple. My optimism and blood pressure raised and fall with each new story. It's getting better as long as you don't fly in or out of Amsterdam. Sadly, that's true. Um, 49 days. That puts you middle of September. I. It will definitely be better than what you hear about now. And definitely better than what you heard about at the beginning of July. So don't be super freaked out. But I would... When you get near to the day, see, like, look online and look up, like, you know, wait time, Amsterdam Airport at the time of day you're going to go and look at, like, results in the last 24 hours. Because sometimes they give you, like, oh, last October's numbers. I'm like, I don't care about last October. And that'll give you a rough idea of what it is. But be careful because they'll say, oh, it usually takes people about 20 minutes to go through the security line. Yeah, no, no. That's, like, 
if you're at the security, like they're checking you, not kind of the entire long line that goes outside. That would be one thing I, I, I would kind of look at, my friend. So, okay, do you recommend Solo Gringo stay in LeBlanc in Rio? Is a week long enough? Yeah, a week is plenty of time in Rio, to be honest. LeBlanc, that's where, like, right next to Copacabana. We, we've stayed there before. That's usually a safer one. There's actually a military complex at the very end where they do training, so that kind of keeps the people away. Um, that's actually where the um, – where like NBC had all their people for the Olympics when it was there, they stayed there. Um, there's, some, there's actually some nice hotels that aren't stupid expensive there as well. So there's that. I have not been to uh, Acapulco, sadly, Harry. Sorry, buddy, I've not been there yet. I will get there eventually. And will we ever go to India? Yes, we will. Um, that's one that I want to take at least, I want to take at least a month there because there's, it's so big and there's so much to see. I mean, I'm not going to see a lot in a month, but I want to give it some real time because going for a week, it's that's not enough time. I mean, I can see what Delhi, you know, that's it, not enough. You know, I'm mean, gonna see Goa. Okay, Goa for a week maybe, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, I was I was from Rhode Island, not your student. Yeah, okay. Uh, where's Jocelyn? Jocelyn is with the boys and my niece. They're at Scotty Skateland or Fun Spot. It's like a. They've got like roller skating and arcades, laser tag, all that stuff. They just have some time because all my my niece is here. My nephew got baptized today, so that's why we're in town. So we're 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 having all the family stuff there. How big is our our map? Is we have a map in our house. We put the pins on and stuff. It's you know five feet wide. So we do we do like that. Favorite places in Japan? Uh, Kyoto was just unbelievable. I love Kyoto. Grace, tips are getting Grace that you might want to go soon because they just they're filing for bankruptcy. Um, it's expensive. It's expensive. But if you like Elvis, it's worth it. Um, uh, because it's kind of cool because they do have an incredible collection of stuff. So The random YouTube channel. Hi, Mark. Hello. My wife and I will be traveling to Santorini, Greece for our anniversary. Awesome. Any tips? You'll be with a lot of tourists. It gets super packed, and there's more islands than that, but it's a cool island. It's a beautiful island, and that's probably the island you should go to. Uh, can we grab a ferry to Athens with a rental car? Do our phones from U.S. and GPS work? Okay, so you can do that, but uh, you are going to rent the car when you get back to Athens. You don't rent a car in, in Santorini. Uh, you get around that way. You can take a ferry back. Honestly, I would just pay for the flight back because you're going to waste an entire day going there on the ferry and a whole day going back. And it might be worth just getting the flight. Um, your phones will, yeah, your phones will work, but you need to, well, they should work depending who your carrier is. Um, talk to your carrier, make sure you get an international data plan uh, so you don't have an insane bill when you come back home. Your GPS will also work if you have that set up to work. Um, however, if you're driving your car, I do recommend getting the GPS for your car uh, just because GPS in your car actually works a lot better than your GPS on your phone for telling you when to turn left, right, and stuff like that. So hope that can help a little bit. <laughs> I took 2021, 22 out of my time, out of my time trial machine program. Please tell me that. No, 2023. Who knows? Aliens may come and invade. But I know, like, we've gone full back into travel this summer. Like, we were, tra we traveled during the pandemic. We traveled all over the U.S. during the pandemic. And we started traveling again internationally last November. And we haven't looked back. And we're going all in. And it's going to come down to how you feel about it. Okay. So if you feel comfortable with the traveling, do it um, and enjoy 2023. I know for us right now, I know we've got. Well, later, for the rest of this year, we'll be down in Texas, probably L.A., England, Brazil, maybe the Galapagos Islands, France, Spain early next year. Um, it's supposed to be a Caribbean trip. Then I don't know if we're going to go to Colombia or Norway in the spring. And then I'm teaching in Spain and Portugal and Greece. And then we've got Israel, Jordan, Ethiopia, Egypt are on there too. So like we got the next year, like we're going, we're, we're, we're going to go travel because it's been so long. And this year we're really focused on, oh, Brian, my buddy, uh, and Franklin, um, we're really focused on seeing our friends. So like when we went out to Maine and was filming with saw our friend Carolyn, we were out there. We, you know, and then 
you know, when we were in Italy, I went to a wedding while I was there. When I was in Finland, I was going to see my family that was there. When I was in Lithuania, I stayed with my best friend that lived there. Like, it's like, I want to see these friends of mine I haven't seen for three years because of COVID. And now I get to go back. So we, we're seeing them. And now I've got to say hi, get to see everybody again. Now it's back to travel to new places. And there's going to be a lot of new places coming. So that's a long answer for, yeah, just go travel. So. Oh, Gothenburg is great. I actually had a Don'ts of Gothenburg video. However, the mic didn't work on that one. So I have me going about Gothenburg. So uh, I need to get back and film there. But no, Sturgate, uh, it is pricey, but honestly, it's not like insane, like how it used to be in comparison because Sony prices have gone up around the world all over the place. So it's not, I mean, it's, it's like if you're not drinking – it's not so bad, but drinking there is really expensive. Uh, going out to eat can be a bit much. That's why you'll see like the locals will go to the local fast food place. So they'll grab a hot dog on the street just to save some cash. So some things to think about. But there, um, Gothenburg, Gothenburg is just a beautiful city. I remember that. It's been, I mean, last time I was there was, I think, 2015. So it's been a while. Um, but it, I remember I really enjoyed it. It was beautiful. Um, people were cool. And then I'd come from Oslo, so it seemed like it was really cheap after being in Oslo. So something to think about. Do you think the luggage chaos will resolve by October? I think it'll be better. I don't think it'll be perfect, but I think it'll be a lot better. Just because you don't have the revenge travelers going in October. That was all about summer travel. We can finally travel in the summer again. Let's do it. People went crazy. So, so there's that. Let's see. You have a special affinity for Germany. Are you German? Um, yes, I have some of my ancestors are from Germany, but I have ancestors from France and Scotland, and we've gone there. Um, I actually did my master's in Germany, uh, so I lived there for two and a half years. So that's one of the reasons why I have a little affinity for Deutschland. Switzerland, in recognition for three to four nights in Switzerland. If you have three to four nights, you want to go to a town like Lucerne. Uh, Lucerne is beautiful. Like if you're going to fly, if you're flying to Zurich. Spend a little time in Zurich, go see Bonhoeffstrasse with all the expensive shops, then go back, get on the train, go to Lucerne, which is one of the prettiest towns in the world. It's gorgeous. The covered bridges there, all kinds of stuff. Lake Lucerne is there. You got the mountains. You take the train. It's just gorgeous. And you head back to Zurich and fly out. That is what I would do if I were you. So I hope that helps, Barry. Top experiences in Mexico and Central America. Probably for Central America, Joss will tell you Nicaragua is probably the coolest. Uh, Granada, Nicaragua is great. We got videos on it. I highly recommend it. That would be probably our highlight of Central Central America. Um, but I think for a lot of people, I tell them, you know, Costa Rica is easy, safe. Um, don't even have to speak that much Spanish either. I mean, it's a great place to go. Good, really good tourism infrastructure. Nic Nicaragua doesn't have so much. Like, you need to hire a driver to take you places. So something to kind of think about. Maya, Jamaica is fantastic. Just, uh, I will say there's a lot of people, the, one of the things people don't like about Jamaica is they feel like they get overrun by the touts trying to sell them stuff all the time. Just remember, that's how they're making their money. There's no social system to help them pay the bills. So that they, when they don't sell anything, their family doesn't eat. So once you have that, you talk to them. You know, I mean, I can't tell them, it's like, I've already bought my stuff now, but I, but thank you for offering. Respect for you, dude. There'll be a respect, fist bump. We're cool. We can just talk. I know it was bothered, but then there'll be some people, I don't want any of your stuff. Leave me alone. I'm like, dude, the guy just asked if you want to buy it. I'm tired of them asking. I'm like, well, that's that's how they make a living. So one thing I'd thank you for that. Um, let's see. Dating as a tourist. Now, do you mean like you're trying to date while you're touring around or you're traveling with somebody you're dating? Um, I can tell you one thing. Traveling with someone will let you know if you want to stay with them. Um, I can't tell you how many people I have met in my travels where it was, yeah, yeah, I started backpacking with my girlfriend or I started backpacking with my boyfriend and now I'm traveling by myself. Dozens and dozens of travels, especially if you're like in a kind of like a, a hub city, like a Munich or an Amsterdam, where that's where they're flying into Europe or more likely they're flying back home out. Uh, that's where you kind of bump into more of them. So that's kind of a funny thing. Um, <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah. Do you think luggage can't, no, like, like I was saying before, it'll be better. Like I'm not, I mean, I'm going, I have a trip in October. I'm going through it. I'm debating. Maybe I might, but I'm probably not. I'm still going to do carry on only just in case, but I'm not, 
I would do it more just to be sure as opposed to being worried. So that would be one thing there. But, you know, try to start thinking about packing lighter. So that's one of the things. Once you start thinking about it, you start to realize, what do I really need? That makes a really big difference. Matt, did you eat lobster when you were in Maine? Yes, of course we did. It's Maine. It's Maine lobster. We made a video for Walter's World Eats, which is that channel right there. If you go to Walter's World Eats on there. And uh, we have an Eats of Maine. And, of course, lobster made it on the list. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate it. Jada, making sure everyone hits that like button. So thank you. You are very welcome. Oh, this is great. Joe, thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you. Finally visit Europe for the first time, June till July. That's awesome. Seven countries, nice. Best time of my life. Your tips made it fantastic. Been playing for three years. You made this different for us. That's awesome. That's why, Joe, that is why we do these videos. So we can help people. So they can go and enjoy Europe. They can enjoy travels. That is awesome. Thank you, man. You made my day, man. Thank you so much. I hope you and whoever you're traveling with had a great time. That's that's awesome. Thank you. That's see, see, this is why we do it. Peter, why do you do this? Like, because of this. We get to help people. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Thanks, man. So let's see. We're about at an hour. I'm gonna probably head off here because I need to get going to my mother-in-law's here in about 15 minutes to say goodnight, to say everybody there, because my niece, I think, is staying there with my sister-in-law. And it, if you all have family, you know how it is. You know how it is. So anyway, I just want to say thanks, everybody. Uh, I'll be on here for a little bit longer. Don't worry. But I just want to say thank you. Like, Joe, you really you really got me, man. Thank you. Jay, do you visit amusement parks and travel internationally? We actually do. Um, one thing I'll say is amusement parks in Europe are much more family friendly. We know like in the U.S. there's a lot of height restrictions. The height restrictions aren't as much in Europe. So you got the family can ride together a lot more, I felt like, uh, which was cool. Um, but we also, I mean, I like the U.S. roller coasters better. Uh, we were at Cedar Point. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, yeah, so in one of the best uh, roller coaster amusement parks in the U.S. So we we like doing those. See, Simon, do you think that hostels will ever become popular in the U.S.? Would be great for budget travelers and meeting people. Love me videos, watch them whenever I'm planning my trips. Thanks, Simon. Thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you for the questions. I think for hostels in the U.S., there are hostels in the U.S. In bigger cities, there are there are hostels. I, you know, I've never, I think part of the reason why hostels have not caught on as big as in the U.S. to do in other places, you don't have, you don't have a lot of young people that are just doing like a weekend away. If they're going a weekend away, they're going to go stay at a friend's house or something. So it's a little different. Whereas think about like, if you're in Europe, you're going to go a couple hours away. It's a whole different country, a whole different culture. Your family's not from there. Whereas here, like if I want to go to Chicago, I've got like 10 friends I can go see in Chicago. It's like four hours away. I want to head down to Memphis. Oh, yeah, I got a best buddy that lives in Memphis. New Orleans, I got friends that live down there. I may want to go down to Savannah and Charleston. You got friends there. So it's a little bit different. Um, <coughs> I don't see them. I don't see them uh, taking off. Uh, I think the I think the Airbnb right now has gone too far. The prices and stuff, so they're coming back down. Like are you, our, our old thing used to be three days or more we're going to do an airbnb or vrbo now with all the extra fees and all the other bs that's been going on lately with them now it's like eh, if it's four days unless we're definitely going to still do a hotel five days is we start considering the, the apartment rentals again just because you know when you're they're like oh yeah it's it's a hundred dollars a night oh but it's a five hundred dollar cleaning fee you're like dude what the heck so i don't know oh carmen thank you so much i know it doesn't show the super sticker here but I appreciate it. Thank you. So, yes, it's got the, it's the, thanks. I, it's that one. Because I, I have that, because here's what gets weird. Because I have on StreamYard, I have on one screen. I have another screen that I flipped to that's actually me watching the live feed that you're watching. And it's about 35 seconds difference. So it like totally throws me off. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I have to move back to the StreamYard one because I'm going to throw <laughs> because it's throw me off. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for being on here. Francis! Hi, Francis. Good to see you. See, Mark, you asked this question. I heard Japan is reopened to tourism, although restricted scheduled chaperones. I planned 2024. Should I postpone if it isn't opening by then? I crave freedom to explore. That's one of the things. If they're going to have restrictions like that, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. That's one thing you have to realize is any country that, in a place is always locking back down or something, anything happens, 
you really have to take that consideration. Do you want to get locked down for an extra week or so? I mean, or you, you're going to be restricted where you want to go. So I, I might, like, I would think by 2024, we should be okay. But I mean, in the back of your mind, think of other things you might want to do. So LA 28 Olympics. Uh, I will, I don't know if we'll be at the Olympics. I know we'll go and film before the Olympics for people to get new LA videos out. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Well, I would like to go to the Paris ones in 2024. Um, and we will be doing a bunch of stuff for the U.S., Canada, Mexico World Cup in 2026. Yeah, 2026. So we're gonna ha- we're gonna make sure we have all of the host cities. We have don'ts for all the host cities. Like some, a lot of them still work. Like I have the Chicago don'ts got a, I don't know, a couple million views. It still is right on. Things haven't changed for it, but ones we need to update, we'll be doing new ones for that. So so we try to help out. Like we went to Brazil before that World Cup and did stuff in the Olympics too. And so we do what we can. Thank you, Betty. I appreciate it. Well, no one brings up Estonia. Estonia is great. Talent is fantastic. If you want to go best city in the Baltics to visit, I'll be honest, if you're looking at uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Talent is the one to go to. So, all right, my friends, I appreciate all of your love, all your support, all the contributions. It makes a huge difference. All of our members on here, all of our patrons on here, I want to say a special thank you to you for all the support you give us. we got a new microphone coming, so hopefully the videos will sound better, though I have so many recorded eventually. Eventually, you'll hear the new the new mic, and we'll, we'll test it out. So I'll have that for you. But I just want to say thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Have a great week, everybody. And uh, I hope you have a great time wherever you're going to travel. Bye.